You're launching these accelerators in partnership with NASA, in partnership with the Air Force, Lockheed, Martin. What opportunities remain for space innovation? Um, again, I, I think we are still at the beginning of a new space era. And uh, even we, if we have uh, already SpaceX uh, active in the space, Blue Origins and a few others, um, I think space is becoming much bigger than what we think today. Uh, today, it's just uh, you know the, the space stations, uh, a few uh, satellites that we launch every year. Uh, but there's much more opportunity and that we can discuss. Like what? Um, we can talk about you know, manufacturing in space, for example, and we have a couple of startups working on that. Um, what would you want to manu manufacture in space? So there, there's a, a startup that is starting to uh, you know, make noise, uh, um, which is called uh, Made in Space. And uh, after developing 3D plastic parts, they are really thinking of uh, manufacturing uh, fiber optics, for example. When you manufacture this type of product under zero gravity, the, the, the specificities and the performance of these uh, fiber optics are uh, 10 times or you know, 1,000 times much better. Uh, Interesting. So what do you make of, you know, I know you closely follow all of the space companies, and certainly SpaceX in particular has made huge strides and huge strides towards sending a human into space. Are they going to be ready? So when they're ready, when they say they're ready. <laughs> so right, right now, they've been ready for a, a couple of weeks or even a, a couple of months. Uh, they're just waiting for the final uh, NASA clearance. And I understand that uh, was t taking a bit more time than what they thought. It, they finally got it, and it's planned to uh, uh, launch, as you said, next week. Um, and I, I think it, it's great. Um, I'm not worried about you know, spacing to be able uh, to be ready. I, I know they have a, a, a tremendous uh, drive and capability to achieve uh, crazy things. So I would not be too worried about this. Why aren't you worried? Because they demonstrate in the past the ability to launch Falcon, Falcon 1, Falcon 9. Uh, I was with them uh, at their launch of, with Falcon Heavy uh, a year ago. And I still remember a year ago, nobody would believe they, they would be able to achieve uh, such performance. By right, a lot has happened in a year. Y yes. Like this year alone. Yeah, uh, and so now they're just re reaching the next step, which is uh, send, uh, you know, bringing to the U.S. that uh, capability of sending men to space that they lost with the, spa the, the, um, um, the, the, their previous vehicle. Um, and so they're going to uh, not rely on Russia anymore. So how huge would this be? This would be the first time since 2011 that the U.S. or a U.S. company would be sending a yeah. human being to space without having to buy a seat on a Russian space sh shuttle. Um, I, I think it's pretty big because um, there's a couple of things. Um, uh, we know that SpaceX can, can launch so many more times in a year than any other companies. Um, I think they're going to la launch people uh, to the space station for a much cheaper price than, than previously. The, the, the previous program was uh, you know, a, a huge, um, um, huge cost and a huge price for NASA. Um, and then as uh, they're going to start sending people to the space station, then that's also for them preparing the next step, which is sending people to the moon or to Mars. How does the progress that SpaceX has made compare to what you're seeing at Blue Origin? <laughs> um, so, yes, it's, you know, we're, the Blue Origin, they, they started earlier than SpaceX, and uh, they are not yet to the point of, of SpaceX. So uh, the drive that Elon has, has brought to, uh, to SpaceX has made a huge difference. Um, and, um, yeah, that's a company that is going much faster. Uh, they are probably have the, the you know, same type of engineer, but drive differently. And that's make the difference. Also, SpaceX uh, has always had you know, uh, f financial constraints, which is not the case with Blue Origin. Um, so it's bringing more pressure on the company. And what about Virgin Galactic? Um, Virgin Galactic, they have a different approach. Uh, they, they, um, they, have, uh, they have two, they have Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbits, Orbits to launch, uh, you know, small satellites in low Earth orbits, uh, and they are on their way. Virgin Galactic, it's, it's more about space tourism. Uh, so first, um, at the frontier of the, um, of, um, of the, uh, the atmosphere of, uh, you know, of, of space, or, or around 100 kilometers, and, um, uh, which is a different program than sending people to the space station. It's a different business model. So Clearly, they're, they're all doing slightly different things, and this could be a huge market if the market is indeed created. Who, who's going to be a winner here? Do you, are they all winners in your view, or 
what will separate sort of the winners from the not? I, I, I like to compare where we are in space right now at the, you know, the beginning of flight in, in the 1900 or the, the beginning of the automotive approximately at the same time. Uh, I'm not surprised to see hundreds of companies trying to uh, reach that market. Uh, it's like of a, it's a new kind of a gold era uh, per se. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of winners. Uh, and maybe um, the, the, the first to, to start or to go we, might not be the, the, the most uh, you know, successful one. Uh, and so that, that's why we, we think that there's still a lot of opportunity. There's still a, a lot of, of smart startups who want to enter into space. And that's what we want to bet on.